Welcome to This Week at Otterbein. I'm Lily Van Weingarten. On this show, learn why a big camera was in the art and communication parking lot this week. And I'm Justin Jordan. Also this week, WOBN prepares to celebrate National College Radio Day. But first, with the Westerville Police reporting recent thefts from vehicles in and around the city, Otterbein Police are reminding you how to keep your car and belongings safe on campus. A September 30th bulletin suggests that putting valuables in the trunk or hiding them if they must be left in the car. Park in a well-lit area if possible and check your car regularly if you are not using it daily. While it's common sense, remember to lock your car and if you have a bike on campus, use a good quality lock to secure it when not in use. And register your bike with Otterbein or Westerville Police if you see suspicious people or situations on campus. You can file an anonymous report on Otterbein's silent witness webpage. Otterbein's largest fundraising campaign, Where We Stand, was launched at Homecoming 2014. This year's Homecoming brought news of two big donations to push the total raise to more than $21 million. Class of 1986 alumna Annie Upper is giving the single largest contribution so far by an individual with her $1.5 million gift. Lambda Gamma Epsilon Fraternity is donating $80,000. The money will go toward an annual scholarship for a fraternity brother. It is also the largest single gift by any Otterbein Greek organization in school history. WOBN 97.5 FM, The Wild Card, will be taking part in this year's National College Radio Day. This 24-hour live marathon will showcase the best of what WOBN has to offer. Al Williamson caught up with WOBN staff members to find out how they got involved. For the first time ever, WOBN will be taking part in National College Radio Day. This is the fifth annual National College Radio Day, and it features more than 400 college radio stations all across the country. WOBN General Manager Matt Cole tells us about how they got involved. Uh, National College Radio Day is something that I found out about last spring at the National CBI Conference in Seattle. WOBN went, and I was approached by a representative from College Radio Day uh, who spoke to me and said, you know, I think this is something that your station should do and that you guys should be interested in. And so I looked into it a little bit. Uh, it was free of charge. We got a lot of incentives for doing so. And I decided that it was definitely something worth giving a shot. So we went out and registered for it. And they told us that we were included and that we were good to go. And it's been great. It's been really fun to plan and organize. Uh, it's going to be an awesome experience. It's something that we've never done before. This is the fifth National College Radio Day. WOBN has never been included, but there are over 400 stations around the United States who do this, and now we're one of them. So it's going to be a great opportunity for not only WOBN, but Otterbein to get some exposure around the college radio circuit and all over the nation, and hopefully it goes well. Other staff members give their thoughts on why this is a big deal for WOBN through this National College Radio Day. It's just another way for us to put our name out on the national platform and get WOBN um, a name out in, uh, across the country um, among a lot of different college radio stations and be able to continue that and allow us to grow nationally and get some national recognition. This is Al Williamson, This Week at Otterbein. Cameras have become smaller as technology has improved, but a giant camera obscura helped a beginning photography class learn how images are created. This is a traveling uh, room-sized camera obscura, modeled in the shape of a Kodak Brownie camera, which was one of the first uh, truly accessible camera to the masses. The students learned the principles of how a camera works with this. They were able to go inside of the camera and um, see how light actually travels through the lens and how it's reversed laterally um, and how that's projected onto film, the same way our eyes work really. We shot a number of uh, paper negatives um, and then we're actually printing them in the dark room as we speak. I constructed this project uh, two years ago and I've been working on a project photographing people who practice like rare and disappearing uh, trades and crafts. And this is my way of like honoring that and sort of also continuing my own practice photographically of working with my hands. Working with this like also opens up new levels of scale that you, you know, can't really deal with uh, with a 35 millimeter camera. 
It's sort of a magical experience going in there and seeing how cameras actually work, especially since they're so used to cell phone cameras. It's nice to kind of get people involved in, you know, you know, the process of making the pictures. Uh, it's certainly a little bit different than what they've been doing here, and I think they enjoyed it. The second annual Kyle Miller Memorial 5K Run Walk will be held Sunday, October 4th at Hilliard Municipal Park, which is located at 3800 Memorial Drive, Hilliard. Kyle Miller was a zoo and conservation major who died attempting to save his own pet at Darby Bend Lakes. Registration is $15 for students and $25 for adults with proceeds going to Kyle Miller Memorial Scholarship for juniors and seniors with a passion for the zoo and conservation science program. In observance of October 24th's Make a Difference Day, some Otterbein students are raising money to help hungry kids. The initiative to improve the lives of others encourages taking action in one's community. To do their part, Otterbein and Westerville City, City School students are planning the Westerville Hunger Heroes 5K and Fun Run. The money raised from the event benefits Share Back a Pack in partnership with the Westerville Area Resource Ministry. Share Back a Pack provides healthy foods and snacks for children around the area that are at risk of hunger on days when school meals are not available. There will be a 5K run walk, a one mile run walk, and a children's dash. Event registration and more information is available at the Hunger Run website. With the 2016 Martin Luther King Jr. Peace and Justice Awards right around the corner, nominations are now being accepted. If you know of any faculty, staff, student, or organization that you think would deserve this award, contact James Prysock for more information. Nominations are due December 4th. Audubon's affiliation with the United Methodist Church is reviewed every 10 years after regional accreditation. Church representatives have been visiting campus this week as part of the process. In the latest Join the Conversation session, Chaplain Judy Guillen Ulzer will discuss the school's ties to the church and values on diversity and inclusion. Learn how Audubon's values align with the UMC on October 9th at noon in the 1847 room. Have you ever come across an article that was interesting but couldn't find it later? A nap can help you get rid of that problem. On this week's Tech Time with Jay, he takes a look at your pocket. Oh, hey there guys, and welcome back to this edition of Tech Time with Jay. My name is Jay Corbett, and today I have a question for you guys. Have you guys ever been on the internet and looked up something? found it, but then the next day you couldn't find it anymore? Well, I got the app for you that can rid yourself of that little issue. The app is called Pocket. So let's take a look at Pocket and I can tell you what it's all about, shall we? Pocket is your perfect mobile companion for commutes, travel, or curling up on your couch. Pocket saves articles, videos, and other web content for later in a beautiful and optimized, easy to view experience for your phone and tablet. You can even save stuff offline. What Pocket contains is unlimited stores to keep all the articles and videos you save in one place. You have three full screen reading modes for day and night. You can save data with Wi-Fi only syncing. You can organize easily with powerful search and tagging. It works with your favorite apps and sites like Twitter, Flipboard, Feedly, and more. You can easily share anything from Pocket to Evernote, Twitter, Facebook, or even one of your close friends. The desktop browser extensions for Chrome, Safari, Firefox, and Internet Explorer lets you save anything from your desktop to your phone and tablet in just one click. Well guys, that's Pocket for you. It's an app that's available on the Google Play Store and the iOS Store, so you should go get it because guess what? What I'm reading on here it says that it won a Webby Award for Best Productivity App and Best User Experience in 2014. So you know this app is amazing. Go out, download it, and save those articles you keep forgetting to read the next day. I'm Jay Corbett. Hope you guys have a great week. Next, on This Week at Otterbein, volleyball takes on Crosstown rival Capital. But first, here are some upcoming campus events to keep in mind when making your plans this week.
The Otterbein volleyball team picked up the win in a rivalry game last night against Capital with a 3-1 victory. The Cardinals were led by Maddie Shelley and Morgan Lowenkamp. The duo combined for 21 kills in the victory. Laura Blumberg also chipped in in the win with a match-high 20 assists. The Cards will next take to the floor on Friday in the Reich Center against Alma. That match is set for 3 p.m. The women's soccer team went on the road to pick up a win last night at Hiram. The Cardinals fell behind 1-0 early in the match, but Madison Birchfield came up with two goals in the second half for the Cards to give them the 2-1 lead. Otterbein would hang on to knock off the Terriers. The next time the team will take to the field is on Saturday at Heidelberg in their first OAC matchup of the season. Kickoff is set for 1 p.m. The men's soccer team also played at Hiram last night, picking up a 4-1 win over the Terriers. The Cardinals got goals from four different players in the match, and Reed Wolf picked up his OAC leading seventh assist last night, and Luis Rivas got his eighth goal of the season, moving him to second in the OAC in goals scored this season. The men's soccer team will also have their first OAC matchup on Saturday. They'll take on Heidelberg at Memorial Stadium. Kickoff is set for 1 p.m. from Westerville. The Cardinals men's golf team won their third tournament of the fall season on Saturday at the DePaul Invitational. Otterbein was led by its star David Monaco, who finished second in the 60-player field. The Cards had four top ten finishers at the Invitational, and they will return to the course this weekend to take part in the OAC Fall Invitational at the Colonial Golf Club in Herod, Ohio. The Otterbein football team picked up a big win on homecoming against Wilmington. Let's take a look at some of the highlights. Flung took home the crowns for both the King and Queen. Perry Reynolds and Kristen Lakes were there to give them the crowns. Now to the football. Kevin Green rushes it in the end zone to get the scoring started for Otterbein after they got a field goal in the first quarter. Here's Dalton Jarvis swarming on the defensive end. The Otterbein defense was in the face of Wilmington all day. Got a stop there in the second quarter. Still in the second quarter, Kevin Green drops back and finds Julian Lowe over the middle, and he makes the catch to pick up the first down, but the Cardinals were unable to convert on that drive. In the third quarter, the Cardinals do convert as Julian Lowe catches it and runs it in for his first touchdown of the afternoon as the Cardinals went up 17 to nothing at that point in the third quarter. After a Wilmington safety, Otterbein got the ball back, and Kevin Green dropped back and found Julian Lowe for a 63-yard touchdown pass. That was Lowe's second touchdown catch of the afternoon, putting the Cardinals up 24-2 on top of Wilmington. And then the Cardinals again were able to convert on a long ball to Julian Lowe. This time it was Cole Benner out of the Wildcat making the throw too low. He walks in for his third touchdown after the acrobatic catch. The Otterbein Cardinals went on to win this one by a score of 31-9. The Cardinals will next be in action on Saturday in the Rhine River rivalry against Heidelberg. You can hear full coverage of the game on WOBN 97.5 and WOBN.net. David Kinder and I will have all the action for you from Tiffin. Our pregame show begins at 1 p.m. Capital might be Otterbein's most hated rival, but the Student Princes are the only team that the football Cardinals battle for the rights to a trophy. In this week's Athletic History Flashback, David Kinder looks back at the origins of the Rhine River rivalry. But this year's Otterbein team looks to bring the Rhine River Cup back to Westerville for the first time since 2010. While they compete for the Cup, many on campus don't know how the trophy came to be. In 1992, Otterbein and Heidelberg played the first college football game in Europe and battled to a 7-7 tie. Every year since then, Otterbein and Heidelberg have competed for the right to bring home the bronze trophy. Tim Gleason was in his second year as OAC commissioner when the game took place and provided color commentary to WOBN's radio broadcast of the game. We spoke to him from his Twinsburg offices about this part of football history. They had been talking about uh, getting a college football game in Germany because uh, the World Football League was just starting up and they wanted the German people to know what American football was all about. Uh, so what they did was they wanted a couple of big powers, you know, Notre Dame and Boston College type schools, and the financing fell through. Uh, they couldn't work out all of the, uh, uh, the financing. So what I did was suggest to them that uh, if they used a couple of uh, Division three schools, they wouldn't have to worry about paying us. 
I even uh, sold them on the fact that Otterbein and Heidelberg are two German names and would fit well with the German people. They would recognize the names of the, of the colleges. For many German fans, this was probably the first time they watched an American football game. How'd they receive it? They were, they were fascinated by it. Uh, they, of course, are used to their own football, which is what we call soccer. But they, they were fascinated by, by the passing game, and uh, especially a big, uh, rugby uh, is, is, is something that they were a little bit familiar with as far as uh, the running game, but they were really fascinated by the passing game, although there wasn't too much passing in that game. Any chance we could see a game in Europe sometime in the future? Well, probably not, uh, because uh, it's it's very difficult to uh, play a regular season game overseas uh, unless you were to do it maybe the first game of the season, uh, because you don't want to uh, have to come back from a trip to uh, Europe and immediately have a game the, the next weekend. Tim, thank you so much for your time. We hope to see you soon. Thank you. So, guys, a lot of history there in the Rhine River rivalry. And this weekend, the Cardinals will be playing for the Rhine River Cup. Hopefully, they can bring it back to Westerville. Hopefully, they can, Elijah. Otterbein may seem like a safe campus, but how safe are you? Have you ever thought about where you would go in the event of a zombie apocalypse? I do, every single day. So I decided to see if other, other <laughs> students are as excited as I am. Hey, I am at the Otterbein Library with... Rachel. Rachel, I have one question for you. If Otterbein were to have a zombie apocalypse, where would you go? Cowan, because I could hide there. Why Cowan? Because I feel like it'd be harder to get into. With all the glass windows in the front? Not in the front, but like... I don't know. I don't study these things. Okay. If you were in the zombie apocalypse, where would you hide in Otterbein? At Otterbein? Yes, it happens right now. Okay. I'd probably go to Battelle, quite frankly. Why? Try to get to the second floor, try to destroy a staircase. You really think you can destroy a staircase in Patel? Uh, naturally. With what? My fists. Good answer. <laughs> if you were in zombie apocalypse and you need to hide right now in Autobine, where would you hide? The Fusion Studio. Why? No one knows where that is. You're right, I don't know where that is. <laughs> okay. Do you think zombies can get into the Fusion Studio? I mean, if they can find it, maybe. <laughs> that, that, that's the premises of the strategy. <laughs> oh, Justin, that was really something. <laughs> I, I don't think it's ever going to happen, but... Uh, oh, that was, that was just really you wait, Elijah. Okay, it's not just you wait. It's not happening. Well, that's all for this week at Otterbein. Thanks for watching.